to another sporadic Christmas to Countdown episode. Um, I'm actually like freezing right now. Our apartment is so cold. It's set to like 74, which should not be cold. Like that's a pretty warm temperature, but it's freezing. So I just kind of threw my sweater over, over this because I am so cold and this obviously like it's just sharp buds not like fur or anything I don't wear fur <laughs> but I hope that you guys are doing fantastic and I hope that you're staying nice and warm and toasty because it is freezing and I am freezing and grab yourself a cup of hot cocoa with fancy marshmallows and Let's dive into another Christmas legend. So today, as you probably saw from the title, we are going to be talking about Hans Trapp. Now, Hans Trapp is a legendary boogeyman from France. Now he is another one of, that is Butter's Tale. <laughs> I'm sorry, if you, I have three cats if you guys didn't know, and that was one of their tales. And then this is another one of my cat, this is Castiel. He doesn't like being held though. He's super cuddly. He loves attention. And he loves like laying by you and laying with you, but he doesn't like to be held. So Hans Trapp is another one of Santa's companions. And he is from France. Now he accompanies Santa to punish naughty children. While Santa delivers the gifts and the presents and the joy of Christmas. So why children get very excited to wake up on Christmas morning, their presents. When Christmas approaches, this sweater is making my hair very staticky. But anyways, when Christmas approaches, naughty children in Alsace and Lorraine, France, get pretty scared because of Hans Trapp. And their parents will even say, Hans Trapp is coming. So according to the legend, in the 15th century, there was a very rich and powerful man who lived at the heart of the Alsace. And his name, if you guys did not guess yet, is Hans Trapp. Now the people knew him to be very vain and heartless and cruel. His life was given over to lawlessness and debauchery. And literally his only goal was to just enrich himself and he wanted to do this by any means necessary so no matter who he hurt no matter what he had to do so not a good guy by any means and it was also said that he worshiped Satan and that he used black magic and had a cult rituals to obtain his wealth and his power so that could have been true and dark magic you know is not something that you ever want to dabble in it's kind of like what you put out there comes back threefold so you, you don't want to deal with anything dark but it could also be because he was just such a cruel guy that people made those assumptions so I'm kind of curious if that he actually did those things like if he actually did dabble in the occult. Which, not all witches are bad. Just wanna throw it out there. Not all witches are bad. Not all people who practice magic are bad. It's like anything. It's what your intentions are. So when the Catholic Church became aware of what he was doing, Hans Trapp was arrested and brought before the Pope in Rome. And then he was excommunicated from the church for the crime of sacrilege. So then when he returned to Alsace, which I get, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, you guys, I'm sorry. Um, he was ostracized by the local people. Everyone wanted to avoid him. Like he was this wild beast. Like he was, you know, something unheard of and an outcast. And they, they just didn't want anything to do with him. Money and his land was all confiscated and he was left penniless so that's another thing like if he was dabbling in the occult and black magic and stuff to gain this wealth to gain 
his power it's kind of like it's like I said it comes back threefold so he got all of this and it instantly just he was left to nothing so they say that he was forced to exile and this is butter if you guys haven't met him yet say hi say hi So it's said that he was forced to exile into the forest and that he isolated himself from the rest of society. He found shelter on the mountain of Geisberg in Bavaria, Germany, where he actually built himself a shack made of sticks, which is pretty impressive because I don't know if I could do that. So the solitude caused him to lose his mind, which is not you know unheard of for solitude to do that to his people like we need people like we need to be around you know our own kind and he spent the days dreaming and you know just planning revenge because he felt like he was wronged which he doesn't sound like the best guy so that like it was almost like the people got their revenge on him so his anger and his resentment were you know amplified and it made him because he was expelled from being a catholic from the catholic church it made him even more devoted to satanism he basically descended into madness hans trap started dreaming of eating human flesh which cannibalism grosses me out so much <laughs> It is like one of the few things that I can't, I just can't watch. It, it, it makes me gag. He was, you know, he just obsessed with the desire of wanting to bite like people. Now he roamed the countryside and disguised himself as a scarecrow by stuffing his ragged clothes with straw. And he spent time gathering the sticks and hay in a field and lying and waiting, looking for his perfect victim. Now, one day he spotted a young shepherd boy who was making his way through the woods. The boy was only 10 years of age, but Hans Trapp was determined to kill and eat him, which is like he's a child. like. So as he stared at the young boy, he was literally drooling at the mouth, thinking of eating this, this child, which there's so many things wrong with this guy, like in incredible amount of things wrong. So before the boy knew what was happening, Hans Trapp pounced and was, you know, viciously attacking him, shoved, like ran a sharp stick through him. And then he dragged the dying child back to his shack where he, you know, the boy had died. He, think of Hansel and Gretel. So, and said that before he could, you know, eat the child, eat the boy, that lightning flashed down from the sky and struck him dead. And as the story goes, God would not allow the abomination to continue and decided to end the crimes of Hans Trapp once and for all because he was, he was that terrible. So it's said that every Christmas he goes from house to house in his scarecrow disguise, bringing the life out of small children and drooling over them. Now this is such a disturbing one you guys like I can't stand the thought of people hurting children uh, then this is like to an even bigger level and I just don't understand it at all how somebody could be like that. I want to know what you guys think about this very disturbing person and if you guys had ever heard of Hans Trapp before, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And if you liked this video, definitely give it a big thumbs up. 
And if you are not subscribed yet, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button. I am going to try to upload as much as possible. And I hope that you guys have an amazing holiday. And until next time, I love you guys.